So, DBL Nation, uh, did you all watch last night's debate? Hmm? Well, a lot of people are saying it was chaotic, a dumpster fire, a train wreck. But before we get into all of that, DBL Nation, we want to know who do you think won last night? President Trump, Joe Biden, or neither of them. Go to dblvote.com to give us your opinion. Now, one thing is for sure, there was a lot of crazy back and forth and a whole lot of interrupting. Here is just some of that. Take a look. And You're the, the way, worst you president vice... America has ever had. Hey, hey, Come Joe, on. Let me... Hunter got thrown out of the military. He was thrown out, dishonorably discharged. That's not true. He wasn't dishonorably cocaine use. Everybody knows he's a liar. But you I just agree. want to hey, make sure. Joe, you're the liar. I, I, well, you're certainly going, going to that, socialist. You're going to socialist. This is, this is, you get the final word, Mr. Well, it's hard to get any word in with this clown. Excuse me. This, hey, hey this let me person. just say. I'm the moderator of this debate. And I would like you to let me ask my question, and then you can answer Go your question. Go ahead. Will you Who shut is up, your, man? Listen. Wow. Okay, so Jeff, let me start with you. What was your impression of last night? I think you, you kicked it off at the top of the show. Chaos was the one word I would use to describe our country right now and that it reflected the presidential debate. It was chaos. There was a moment like five or ten minutes in where I literally like looked at my wife and I was like, one of these two guys are going to be our president for the next four years. It, it was a moment that was embarrassing, and I think they should be embarrassed as well. I am going to try to keep it half full here, Sam, and I thought Christopher, Chris Wallace did a good job. I think, you know, keeping those two kittens in the box was a tough task. He asked some great questions that I would ask that I think it's important for America to hear how they answered those. That's up to America to decide. I didn't think they did a great job. But I really want to focus on Biden here because I know who Trump is, right? I think America knows who Trump is, but I wanted to know who Biden was because I didn't really know. And I think he did a pretty good job of studying his answers. And more than importantly, I think a lot of people were looking to see if he was competent or not. And I believe he was. There was a couple stutters in there, but Trump interrupted him so much, he didn't give him a chance to fail. So I thought Biden looked good all in all. I really liked the part where he said, I want to fund the police not defund the police, because I know you guys hear me talk about this on the show all the time, and bring a mental health expert to the scene with the police. So I think that was my favorite moment out of Biden. And uh, there were some moments, you know, I think there was name callings on both sides, but when Trump did that low blow for uh, Biden's son and Biden reacted the way he did, that, that, was, uh, that was a big thumbs up in my book. Yeah, and I agree with you there, but I highly disagree with you regarding Chris Wallace. I think any parent out there with kids could have done a far better job in managing the chaos than he did. I think he added to the circus. And more importantly, there was very little follow-up questions. There was no fact-checking. The American people, Lindsay, deserve to know in real time when one of those candidates is not telling the truth. I think that Chris Wallace did the best he could with the lemons that he was given. So I completely disagree with you. I think that he tried his best. And who to blame is two people that are running for a position to run our entire country that decided to spend the evening personally attacking one another on nonsense and not laying out a clear plan forward. I don't think I gained any clarity, nor did anybody besides their bases that they already have voting for them gained any clarity. I think that they didn't sway any undecided voters. The country's intention and everything was off the rails. And this only added to that feeling of tension that Jeff was discussing earlier in this country. So, you know, I, I just was disgusted by it because, honestly, as funny as it might have been with the smirks and all those kind of things, to watch that happen and then think that one of these people has to be our president, you know, I was just very disheartened. I think the whole country was feeling that way. Yeah, I feel sick to this moment. Uh, one of the more striking moments from last night was when President Trump did not clearly denounce white supremacy. A lot of you are writing in about that. We hear you. Uh, he then had a very interesting message for the far right white supremacist group, the Proud Boys. Watch. I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I'm, it. Do it. Say it. Do you want to call him? What do you want to call him? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacist and right like me to condemn? White Proud supremacist Boys. and right Proud, Proud Boys. Boys. Stand back and stand by. Members from the Proud Boys group celebrated President Trump's call out, even creating this logo using his words as a slogan. President Trump's campaign told Fox News that the president has, quote, continuously denounced white supremacists, including at the debate. I did not hear that part. Uh, Al, did you? I didn't hear it. And if it was continuously, he would have continued last night. You know, Sam, 
the topic of race, we always say the topic of race instead of calling it what it is, the topic of racism. That's almost too polarizing, so much so that we can't even denounce Nazis without playing verbal gymnastics with that. So let's take the word race out of it. Let's make this real easy. What if the president was asked to denounce pedophiles? And instead of saying, what are you talking about? Of course, I have, I, what are you, of course, I'm gonna denounce him. What if he said, well, who do you want me to condemn? The ones that go after boys or the ones that go after girls? That's a very strange answer for what would, for most people, be a layup in terms of answering a question. So we are now at the fact, we are at the point where we are now dicing up all right white groups in terms of the Proud Boys, well, stand back, stand by. Stand by says, get ready, because I'm gonna need you soon. That's what I took from that, and I think a lot of people did as well. Lindsay? I think in regards to race, which was the number one issue for me and still is in this election, the president went on a global stage and neglected to denounce white supremacy in any way, which is the most disgusting part of this entire debate. But beyond that, it came on the heels of discussing Breonna Taylor and exactly how they felt about order in those cities and how her family was and was treated. And Chris Wallace was asking me about that. And none of them had an answer. Neither Joe Biden or President Trump had an answer about how they're going to address situations like that and quell race relations in this country. Joe Biden said, yes, we're going to get people together and we're going to handle it. Exactly how? Lay that plan out, because I think a lot of people are waiting to hear something real from either one of these candidates to say how are you going to protect black lives in this country and stop making it an issue where if you support police officers that you also don't support black people. Those two things are not the same argument and it's really frustrating to me that they, instead of taking those moments to lay out a clear plan, they took that time to continue calling each other names and move the topic on to not denouncing white supremacy and calling each other. Like it just, I don't understand how that happened in that moment right. when that to me is the biggest issue with coronavirus in this country. Yeah, amen. Amen. The thing is, yeah. Listen, both of them, both of them, in my opinion, failed race relations last night. I feel like as American people, we are the ones that lost last night. We are the ones that we're being robbed. So many small businesses are recovering or they're bankrupt. So many people have lost their jobs. So many people are out there fighting, marching in the streets and trying to solve in their own right civil unrest. And did we get to hear any of those solutions last night from our presidential candidates? No, we did not. So I hope that the American people can be unified in that we want more and, Sam, and we want better. While you're looking for comments, yes, I, I have a lot of them. You talk about so many people losing their jobs. People look at me as a talk show host. I, for 15 years, I made my living as a stand-up comic. You haven't worked. So many of my friends, so many of my friends, are out of work and they have no idea when they're going to work again or if they'll ever work again. The concept of a comedy club being, oh, it was a packed show last night. That's now anti. Right. The, the rules that will be in place. So that we need, it's not just comedians, it's not just waiters and servers and chefs. We need a plan, and no one laid one out last night. I think everybody's frustrated. I agree. Uh, let me get in the DBL. Uh, and describing, can I just can jump you in here real Go ahead, you guys, go. Lindsay and then Jeff, and then I'll get in the well, comments I from wanna, DBL Nation. Well, I want to say, describing Joe Biden, for Joe Biden to describe uh, what happened with Breonna Taylor as a situation with bad apples, he literally used that word in the debate last night, and what happened with George Floyd as bad apples as police officers, to me, that is a ridiculous statement, because a bad apple may be a bully in a school. A bad apple is not, in my opinion, somebody that murders someone. So those people were murdered and killed by police, and that's my opinion. And so if that is what he's going to describe them as, then he is not standing for what his entire party is standing for and saying, we are supporting black lives and telling police we're going to take actionable steps to change this. Yeah, Jeff. Yeah, I just want to jump into I agree 1,000% with you guys about Trump and not denouncing Proud Boys or whatever else he, they, he did not denounce. He failed on that. Absolutely failed. I agree with you guys 100%. But Biden also failed, too, when he was questioned about Antifa, and he said it's just an idea. It's not an organization or group. They're being funded, and that's scary to say that they don't exist. And both of them, shame on both of them at the end, they are both given the question, what are you going to do to talk to your base if things go wrong in the election, which they will. We will not have a president by November 3rd or November 4th because we're going to have to count all these votes. And both of them did not say either thing to their base to be like, listen, I do not want unrest in this country if we do Jeff, not have all the ballots Jeff, counted. They Jeff, both failed on that. Jeff, I got to push back on you for one second on that one, buddy. And that's the, the, the difference. We cannot equate Antifa and what What's happening with the alt right just because the alt right has bodies on their list, the, the, you know, the, the claim. I'm not saying and you're I'm, saying that. I'm Go ahead. No, no, no. And Al, I want to make that clear. I'm definitely not pushing back against your point. I am not pushing back. I'm saying where they each failed. I'm right. not I'm not countering Black Lives Matter versus Antifa at all. I'm just using that as another 
Biden failed and so did Trump. They both failed was the point I was and, making. And Jeff, I think as two parents sitting here talking to each other, didn't you want to hear our presidential candidate saying absolutely there's going to be no violence and I will stand in the street if I have to to prevent violence. Didn't, weren't you just waiting for, again, a simple answer? I, I hate answer? to interrupt you, too. Okay. I hate to interrupt, but I got to get in the DBL Nation. I see your comments, and I want you to be part of the conversation. Uh, we got Pam on Insta. I couldn't believe how rude they both were. I don't remember one this bad. We got Darlin. Both of them lost. Trump behaved like a toddler. Biden, an exhausted, frustrated parent. G1 on Twitter. Joe Biden refused to acknowledge left-wing violence and terrorism. Tim on Twitter. Trump won the debate for one reason. The conversation is almost entirely about about what Trump did or did not say. And finally, pandemic on Twitter, the makers of Xanax won. That was an anxiety inducing train wreck. Ain't that the truth? Let's take a look at our poll because I want to see what DBL Nation has to say. You believe, 59% of you believe that Joe Biden won the debate. If I can leave you with one thought or rather an action, if you're angry, vote. If you're frustrated, vote. Hey, if you're content, vote. Get out there and vote. We'll be right back.